So I just want to say hello to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today at our virtual reality naloxone training simulation webinar. As many of you know, we are thrilled to partner with Walmart to present this unique virtual reality training experience. We initially launched a simulation back in February 2000 at CACA's National Leadership Forum. We then engaged with many of our amazing coalitions to learn how our communities can host events using this technology. We had really tremendous initial feedback including suggestions how to use the tool as a standalone for awareness events, how to create a training around it, or how to add it to trainings that are already being held. Just as we're starting to host in-person community events, we all know what happened, and uh, we moved to virtual everything. Uh, and while we're hoping the last half of this year might allow us to have more opportunity to host events back in person, we're currently hosting events virtually, and we are thankful to our amazing CADCA members, and specifically today, thankful to our good friends, Jamie Ross and PACT Coalition here in Las Vegas for being our co-hosts. Before I kick this off to hear from our esteemed group of speakers, I wanna let everyone know the goals for today. First, we're gonna hear from this wonderful group of speakers here in Nevada who are working every day to save lives and who are honored to be part of this event today. Then along with our wonderful volunteer, Novalette Mack from PAC Coalition, we will view a virtual reality simulation demonstrating a few different scenarios on how to recognize when an overdose is happening and how to administer naloxone. We'll follow along with Novalette, who will be experiencing this training in a VR setting while wearing the Oculus headset. Lastly, we'd love your valuable input while learning from you all in attendance today how you might use this virtual reality format in your communities. We plan to learn from these events how to roll out this technology nationally and what resources we need to accompany this goal, including a toolkit with valuable information, who to invite, potential speakers, social and other media engagement, in addition to your ideas for using this tool for training purposes. So again, we'd love your valuable input. After we hear from our speakers and see the simulation, we'll have a few minutes for some guided q and I'll ask a few questions at the end of the hour. Uh, you can type your answers into chat or, or we can call on you if you raise your hand feature. And we really appreciate your input. Additionally, in the weeks to come, we'll reach out to you all as a group to get more input from you as well. And now on to our speakers. First, we'll start with CACA's president and CEO and my boss, General Barry L. Price. General Price joined us at CACA nearly five years ago as our executive vice president and chief operating officer. And last September 1st, he was named CACA's president and CEO. We're excited to have him as our leader and we're excited to hear from him today. Directly following General Price, we will hear pre-recorded remarks from Congresswoman Dina Titus, who represents Nevada's first district since 1998. We're so pleased to hear from her today and thankful that she took time out to send us some remarks. I turn it to you, General Price. Thank you for your introduction, Rico. Keck is excited to join Congresswoman Titus, State Senator Hardy, Dr. Terry Kearns, Jamie Ross, Brandon DeLeese, the PAC Coalition, CACA's Board Secretary, Greg Puckett, CAC member Virgil Boisel, and other leaders from the state of Nevada for this virtual, this training and virtual demonstration on how to save a life by reversing an opioid overdose. I would like to personally thank Walmart for their investment in not only this technology, but for their investment in the people who will benefit from this virtual life-saving training. As Rico mentioned, PAC Coalition's Executive Director, Jamie Ross, is a great friend of CACA and has helped our movement across many years and in a variety of impactful initiatives. And a special thank you to everyone on today's webinar. We hope this unique virtual event uh, will train you on how, to, how local agencies are collaborating to combat the opioid epidemic in our communities. Founded in 1992, CACA's mission is to strengthen the capacity of community coalitions to create and maintain safe, healthy, and drug-free communities globally. 
CACA represents more than 5,000 community substance use and misuse coalitions nationally, and we work in more than 30 countries around the world. You should know that there are 42 substance use and misuse coalitions in the state of Nevada committed to working to create safe, healthy, and drug-free communities. Some of these coalitions are on the webinar right now. A special thank you to all of them who are joining us for this discussion today. We know that prevention of substance use and misuse before it starts is the most cost-effective and cost-efficient way to reduce substance misuse. Data shows that $1 invested in prevention saves communities an average of $2 to $20. Last year, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, posted an important health alert network advisory reporting new provisional data indicating that increases in fatal drug overdose deaths over the last year appear to have accelerated during the COVID pandemic. Approximately 81,230 overdose deaths occurred in the United States from June of, of 2019 through May of 2020. The highest number of overdose deaths ever recorded in a 12 month period. That number would be the 10th largest city in the state of Nevada, almost the size of the city of Sparks and 26,000 larger than Carson City. Imagine a Raiders home game at Allegiant Stadium on any given Sunday. We lost 15,000 people above that stadium's seating capacity. Synthetic opioids, primarily illicitly manufactured fentanyl, appears to be the primary driver of these increase in overdose deaths. This is tragic, but not surprising news. During the COVID pandemic, many Americans are facing experiences of heightened stress and anxiety, as well as anxiety related to physical and social distancing. And our work to prevent substance use and misuse is more important now than it ever was. Over the last several months, our coalitions are beginning to see an increase in substance use disorders because of COVID. Due to COVID distancing practices, people are not able to assess their doctors or recovery and treatment resources as needed. Our partnership with corporate and federal organizations supports our work in communities such as yours. Our partner Walmart has developed a virtual reality tool to deliver a powerful experiential element to naloxone and overdose reversal training. It has never been more important to know how to save a life, and our coalitions are at the forefront of efforts in their communities and are making tremendous impact. Our partnership with Walmart is aiming to help community coalitions sustain and thrive virtually during this uncertain time, nationally and internationally. Given that CACA has been able to maintain and even increase engagement with our coalitions during this pandemic, there is an opportunity to further develop strategic training such as this one today. Thank you once again to Dr. Terry Kearns, Senator Joe Hardy, Jamie Ross, and Brian DeLeese for being a part of this evening's event. Please now join us in watching a video from Congresswoman Dina Titus. Hello, I'm Dina Titus, your Congresswoman for Nevada's first district here in the heart of Las Vegas. I wish I could be joining you all in person, but I want you to know that I am grateful for the work of the Community Anti-Drug Coalitions of America and your commitment to combating substance abuse in our community. Before the COVID-19 pandemic upended our lives, we were facing a different but also deadly epidemic of opioid use. Tragically, Nevada has lost thousands of people from opioid drug overdoses over the past 10 years. We know these numbers would be even higher without the overdose reversal drug, naloxone. Our state has led the way in ensuring widespread community access to naloxone. We have even made the drug available without a prescription at local pharmacies. Unfortunately, we've entered a new phase of the fight against opioid abuse because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The anxiety, depression, and stress of the pandemic have contributed to an increase in overdose deaths. From the first quarter to the second quarter of 2020, overdose deaths rose by 50% here in Nevada. 
Widespread distribution of naloxone is one important component in our battle. We must also ensure access to recovery support. That's why I was proud to vote for the American Rescue Plan, which will help crush this virus, get our economy back on track, and provide nearly $4 billion in funding for mental health and substance abuse services. I'll continue to assist in your efforts to eradicate drug misuse from our communities and to help people stay on the road to healthy and happy recoveries. I'm so grateful for all the life-saving work the PACT Coalition does every day. And you do it all with not nearly enough praise or recognition. Please consider me a friend and give my office a call if we can ever be of service. Thank you for being on the front lines for all of us. Thank you, General Price, and it was great to hear from Congresswoman Titus. Now it is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Terry Kearns, Substance Abuse Law Enforcement Coordinator from the Nevada Office of the Attorney yeah. General. Terry Kearns is a Master of Science in Nursing and a PhD concentrated in emergency management. Dr. Kearns has worked in a variety of disciplines in nursing, medical surgical, ICU, nursing staff development, as an organ procurement specialist. After her nursing career, Dr. Kearns entered duty as a special agent with the FBI. Dr. Kearns worked a variety of programs in the FBI, healthcare fraud, weapons of mass destruction, hazardous materials, bombing, and terrorism investigations. Most recently, Dr. Kearns was the supervisor on the Joint Terrorism Task Force in Las Vegas, focusing on domestic terrorism investigations. Dr. Kearns recently retired from her 21-year FBI career to begin her latest journey as the Nevada Office of the Attorney General's statewide substance abuse law enforcement coordinator. In this position, Dr. Kearns blends her background, experience, and education to emphasize a holistic, multidisciplinary approach focused on law enforcement, healthcare, and public health professionals. The primary focus of this position is to address the drug crisis. Dr. Kearns enjoys the engagement and collaboration of the dedicated stakeholders involved in this mission. We're thrilled to hear from her today to talk to us about the state of Nevada's fight against opioids. Dr. Kearns? Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Attorney General Ford apologizes he's not able to be here today, but he and I both appreciate the opportunity to be part of this important event. A priority of Attorney General Ford since taking office is to support programs for people suffering with mental health and substance use disorders. He is a strong advocate for programs, policy, and legislation supportive in these areas. Part of that starts with my position as Nevada's Substance Abuse Law Enforcement Coordination Coordinator. My position is funded through the Nevada Department of Health and Human Services State Opioid Response Grant. The partnership between the Department of Health and Human Services and the Attorney General's Office with my position is to get first responders, public health, and healthcare professionals to work together and share their data to address the opioid crisis. There have been two primary goals I've worked on since starting this position in late 2017. The first goal was the widespread distribution of naloxone, the drug that reverses the deleterious effects of opiates during an opiate overdose. As part of the widespread distribution of naloxone, my focus was to encourage Nevada law enforcement agencies to develop policy for the use of naloxone by their law enforcement officers, to train officers on the use of naloxone, and provide as many law enforcement officers as possible with life-saving naloxone. Part of this was to change attitudes of law enforcement to start treating substance use disorder as a brain disease as opposed to a criminal justice issue. This started with assisting those who suffered an opioid overdose through the administration of naloxone. I often heard from law enforcement that emergency medical services would soon, be on, would soon be on the scene of overdoses and they were better suited to treat the overdoses. But the understanding that like CPR, the sooner CPR is administered to someone who needs it, the better the person's chances of survival. 
It is the same with the administration of naloxone to someone experiencing an opiate overdose. The minutes it may take EMS to arrive and administer naloxone, those minutes could be the difference between life or death for that person. Happily, I can tell you that Nevada law enforcement officers now are trained on and carry naloxone. There are numerous examples throughout the state of Nevada of law enforcement officers saving lives through the administration of naloxone to someone experiencing an opioid overdose. You'll hear more about naloxone distribution from some of the other speakers. A related pro second project, and the one I spend most of my time on now, is the implementation of a system to provide near real-time notification of spikes in overdoses throughout Nevada. This was achieved through the implementation of the high intensity drug trafficking areas overdose mapping application program, also known as ODMAP. By inputting susp suspected overdoses into ODMAP, the system will notify stakeholders if there is a spike in overdoses. The threshold for a spike is defined by each community and each county has also developed a community overdose spike response plan. An example of an activity in the community overdose spike response plan would be if a spike was detected, public health measures such as getting naloxone out to people in the geographic area of the spike to help prevent more overdoses or overdose deaths and also offering other services to those with substance use disorder. In respect of time, these are general explanations of these programs and just a few of the activities out of the Attorney General's office related to the opioid crisis. I would add that any of the programs the Attorney General's office works on could not be done without all of our partners. The opioid crisis requires collaboration of all the partners. Lastly, I want to thank everyone for the passionate efforts and involvement to address the opioid crisis. Your work makes all the difference in the lives of Nevadans. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kearns, and um, thank you for all of the work you do every day and for coming and joining us today. We really appreciate that. Next up, we're excited to have pre-recorded remarks from State Senator Joe Hardy. Dr. Hardy not only serves Nevada's 12th district, but he also serves the community as a family doctor and is here to talk to us about his work with the opioid crisis and the importance of naloxone. Dr. Dr. Hardy's life is a testament to his belief in servant leadership, where we all become community stewards. After traveling extensively for his education, service in the United States Air Force and missionary work, he returned to Nevada where he raised his family and continues to serve his community and his neighbors. Dr. Hardy was born in Reno, Nevada and attended BYU in Provo, Utah. He graduated medical school at Washington University in St. Louis. Following a family practice residency in Phoenix, he completed his military service in South Dakota, separating as a major in the United States Air Force. Returning to Nevada, he joined a private family medical practice in Boulder City, where he worked for 22 years. He has been board certified by the American Board of Family Medicine for over 35 years, and is a former board member of the Clark County Health District and Southern Nevada Health District. We're excited to hear his remarks today. Joe Hardy, um, I'm a family doctor uh, and I've been uh, given the pleasure opportunity to uh, talk with you folks today uh, we we obviously are in challenges in all sorts of different ways today and because of the covid virus uh, we have uh, looked at life in different ways and one of the ways we've looked at is how this has affected our uh, overdose or accidental overdoses or bad reactions or opioid safety. And I participated with a couple of medical students and another physician, Wendell Havens, uh, in a study. And sure enough, since uh, March 2020, when we had the stay at home order, we've had uh, more accidental overdoses involving opioids and particularly fentanyl. Uh, fentanyl has a longer half-life, is more powerful, takes less to give you, quote, pain relief, but less also to put you to sleep. And so that put to sleep is why we're 
talking about a very valuable uh, tool that we have. Um, and I've, I've been involved with uh, teaching physicians what a tool this looks like, uh, because if you hold this tool called Narcan spray uh, with your fingers uh, like this and your thumb like that, and you shove it up somebody's nose, you obviously can't put it too far up the nose because your fingers are going to block it. And then you just push the plunger with your thumb and you have delivered a Narcan spray. Uh, and then uh, because the half-life of Narcan is, or the effective length of time that it lasts is not as long as the time that a narcotic will last, then the first thing you do is you ask somebody to call uh, for help and you get them to uh, the emergency room. If somebody cannot be aroused and you wonder why it is and you haven't figured out why it is, but you suspect that there may be an accidental overdose. Narcan is an opioid antagonist. It is not a controlled substance. You can use it and you can use it again. So it usually takes about two minutes to three minutes to take effect. And if it hasn't taken effect, you can do it again. And Narcan specifically, the brand name of naloxone comes two in a packet. And so you end up buying two uh, usually in a packet, and you can deliver the second one by the time you've given the second one, and they haven't awakened fully, hopefully help is on the way, and you're going to get them to the emergency room or the emergency clinic. Now, uh, fortunately in Nevada, if you are uh, part of the problem where you have uh, participated in the group that has uh, used a narcotic uh, legally or illicitly, uh, you will not be charged with a crime if you take a, the person to the emergency room. And if you, even if you've used the same uh, medicine and you have not fallen asleep permanently, like those that overdose do, you will not be charged with a crime. It's called the Good Samaritan Law. So we have instituted that in Nevada. Now, the other good news is if you go to the pharmacist, uh, you can get the Narcan uh, without a prescription. You don't have to say it's for my friend. You don't have to say it's for my son. You don't have to say it's for me. You just show up and you'd say, I'd like a prescription for naloxone. They'll give you the choice. Do you want the Narcan uh, spray or do you want it as an injection form? Uh, how do you want it? And they will uh, sell it to you without any questions asked who it's for or how come or why or whatever. And uh, that is a huge opportunity because when you suspect that your son or daughter or somebody else, your friend may be using, and even if it's a legitimate use for chronic pain and they have an accidental overdose, Narcan will still work. Um, and it is an antagonist. When you've used it, they will, uh, not really like you very much because they will have lost the pain relief or the narcosis relief uh, from the narcotic that they've used. So it is, uh, it's a good thing to do. And we've created laws in the state of Nevada that have actually decreased the accidental overdoses that have happened in the state of Nevada. It's been a huge boon for us as we've uh, made practitioners aware of the problems that uh, narcotics can have. And uh, we've instituted the laws that the physician community and the APRNs and the physician assistant community have been very good at implementing. Um, we know that now fentanyl is the quote, drug of choice for uh, being able to uh, cut heroin or anything. And so it, it is a long lasting, very potent, and it's not unusual to have several doses of Narcan uh, in order, naloxone, in order to reverse uh, the effect of fentanyl. So as uh, I've participated in a uh, medical study with two uh, medical students and with Dr. Havens, and we found that as uh, time has gone on, the uh, fentanyl overdoses have gone up 
and the prescription overdoses have gone down. And so with that fentanyl going up, we've also noticed heroin going up in overdoses. And so we, we don't want people to die. We want people to live. We want people to uh, have a good life. And so we, we want to intervene. And if there's anybody who doesn't know where to give the shot right now, if you get uh, naloxone as a shot, there's anybody who doesn't know where the deltoid muscle is, they haven't been watching the news about all the vaccination clinics. So it's a fairly easy thing to do, as you've seen in all the vaccination clinics. And many of you, obviously, and hopefully have been vaccinated and will be vaccinated against the COVID virus. But we, we are grateful for the opportunity to have this uh, chance to talk to all of you. And I'm appreciative of uh, how supportive you have been all of you have been through the political process that I've been involved with in getting naloxone available to anybody and everybody without a prescription. And even if you, as a physician, you write a prescription for a narcotic, then you write a prescription at the same time for Narcan or for naloxone, whichever kind you want. So thank you for participating in this great opportunity to talk and make people aware of this problem. That's Joe Hardy. Thank you very much. Bye. That was great to hear from Senator Hardy. And, and now it is my pleasure to introduce my friend and longtime CADCA friend, Jamie Ross, who is the executive director of the PAC Coalition here in Las Vegas. Jamie has been the executive director of the PAC Coalition since 2011. She's been involved with substance misuse prevention from a young age and took that passion into a career creating system-wide change to reduce substance misuse. The PACT Coalition is the largest substance misuse prevention coalition in Las Vegas with diverse funding focusing on the spectrum of prevention, including mental health, primary and tertiary substance misuse prevention and the intersection of prevention into all aspects of the community building. As the executive director, Jamie oversees all programs and funding, writes grants, manages staff, and has grown the PAC Coalition to 10 times its original funding and capacity since inception. Like CADCA, Jamie believes in the power of community to change itself for the better. Thank you for your work, Jamie, and for being here to speak with us today. Thank you so much, Rico, um, and thank you both to CADCA and Walmart for putting this together. Uh, what a great community collaboration. At the PACT Coalition, we focus on substance misuse prevention, behavioral health promotion, and we have three main goals. Uh, we like to say that we are the neutral convening table when it comes to substance misuse. So understanding who's doing what in the community and how we're all working together and, and really understanding on a granular, granular level how we can better serve our community through collaboration and creating that systems level change. We also love providing training and education to our community. We're incredibly grateful to our partnership with Southern Nevada Health District. Uh, that's actually how we're able to offer free trainings for naloxone in our community. Um, and we also were able to provide uh, funding to our direct service providers so that they are able to um, embed prevention within every aspect of society and with every, within every subset of society. We believe that prevention is throughout the lifespan and can benefit anyone. Uh, when we speak of naloxone or Narcan, we're keeping someone alive long enough to find recovery, whatever that looks like for them. With the increase of illicitly manufactured fentanyl in our drug supply here in Nevada, I think we should all be concerned about the increase in fatal overdoses in our state, especially in children under the age of 18. Most of the fentanyl seen in Nevada uh, has been in fake pressed pills that cannot be differentiated from pharmacy manufactured pills. Youth who may not use heroin, uh, but perceive a pill of OxyContin to be safer than heroin, would not be able to tell that this pill has fentanyl in it. The goal is to decrease our overdoses and increase our access to naloxone, and that is a safe and effective way to do this. If we take anything away, it is that every one of us is a first responder, and our com as a community, we should be prepared. There are multiple ways to get access to naloxone, whether through your doctor, your pharmacist, or a community agency through Southern Nevada Health District. We should all be carrying this life-saving drug with us. 
you can look up where to get naloxone at nvopioidresponse.org. It's our community. If we don't keep it safe, who will? Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you for your remarks and for your work. Next up is Brandon DeLisi. Brandon is an epidemiologist at the Southern Nevada Health District, where he leads efforts to monitor, develop, and improve surveillance within the fields of drug overdose and EMS. Brandon also leads the health district's efforts to distribute naloxone to first responders throughout Southern Nevada. Brandon received his MPH in epidemiology from the University of Edinburgh, and his research interests include injury, trauma, and opioid use. Thank you for being here today, Brandon. Thank you and good evening. My name is Brandon Delisi. I'm an epidemiologist at the Southern Nevada Health District that lead an Aloxin grant with the Health District's EMS office. To give you all a brief background of this grant, the Health District was awarded funds under the First Responders Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act in September of 2017. Through this grant, the Health District widely distributes naloxone kits for free throughout Southern Nevada the purpose of this program is to allow first responders and members of key community sectors to receive naloxone trainings and naloxone kits so that they have the necessary tools to respond to a suspected opioid overdose. The health district values the importance of linking those who have overdosed to an appropriate treatment center. Therefore, every naloxone kit that we hand out has a referral to an integrated opioid treatment and recovery center. Our naloxone trainings provide both first responders, such as law, law enforcement and EMS personnel, and lay responders, such as people who use opioids, friends and family of people who use opioids, and service providers with the training that they need. We have a survey that is filled out after each naloxone training, and among first responders and lay responder recipients, the vast majority reported high levels of confidence to respond to an overdose. The majority of participants also reported high levels of confidence in understanding the Good Samaritan Law and how to use naloxone. Since 2017, the grand total of individuals trained by the Health District on how to use naloxone is 3,689 individuals, and the grand total of naloxone distributed by the Health District is 19,344 doses. So as we know, communities across the nation are experiencing increased overdose. To provide some data at the local level, most fatal drug overdoses in Clark County are unintentional. The preliminary rate of fatal unintentional overdose in 2020 for all substances in Clark County was higher than the previous peak in 2011, meaning that we are in unprecedented territory. Communities across the nation are experiencing increased opioid overdose, specifically those due to illicitly manufactured fentanyl. In 2019, there were 64 fentanyl deaths, and in 2020, there were at least 166 uh, deaths in Clark County due to fentanyl overdoses. So that's an increase of 159%. So also fentanyl impacts younger individuals. Median age at death in 2020 for fentanyl overdose is 29 years. Median age at death in 2020 for a non-fentanyl overdose death is 49 years. So hopefully those data points help contextualize the situation that we are currently in. Fentanyl continues to be a big concern in our community. However, naloxone and overdose prevention education can play a big part and have an impact in reducing these overdose deaths. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon, for your remarks and for your work. Finally, I will pass it to our great partner, Michael Flowers here at the Walmart Academy, who will walk us through the virtual reality simulation. Thank you to Novalet Mac, also from PAC Coalition, who will wear the headset and allow us to experience a virtual reality demonstration. Michael. Guess what I just swiped for my grandma. What? Don't people get strung out on this stuff? Yeah. That's the point. These two industrious young gentlemen have stolen opioid medication for recreational use. Oxycodone, hydrocodone, fentanyl, and heroin are a group of chemicals referred to as opioids. 
The first three may be prescribed by a medical professional to treat pain, but they can be addictive and deadly, especially if not taken as directed. Heroin has no legitimate medical purpose. Opioid overdose is the current leading cause of death for people under 55. True or false? More than half of Americans have been affected by opioids. Correct. Over 70,000 people died of opioid overdose in the United States in 2017. And millions more were impacted through overdose or misuse. That means that if you have not been directly affected by opioids, someone you know likely has. But not every overdose needs to end in death. Today we're going to teach you to spot the signs of an overdose and administer naloxone, a life-saving medication. Hey, you okay, dude? You don't look so good. Opioid overdoses will slow or stop your breathing. This reduces the amount of oxygen in your body, resulting in pale or clammy skin. The pupils will constrict until they are the size of a pin. The lack of oxygen can cause the fingers and sometimes lips to turn blue, gray, or purple, depending on the person's skin tone. <laughs> Your breathing is weird. It's too slow. A very serious side effect of opioids is depressed breathing. During an overdose, their breathing will become shallow, erratic or stop entirely. Oh, Jay. Jay. Jay, Jay. Wake up, man. Wake up or I'm calling the cops. John. Hey, I'm not playing with you. Are you breathing? Dude, you're not breathing. Jonathan. Loss of consciousness is the final tell of an overdose. If you suspect someone is passing out because of an overdose, you should scream their name and try to wake them to see if they will respond. As with any emergency, the first thing you should do is call 911. 911, what's the Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, my, I need help. Naloxone is a life-saving medication that can reverse opioid overdose and restore breathing. There are several types of naloxone available, and all of them provide a life-saving medication in the event of an opioid overdose. In the example today, you'll see the nasal spray Narcan administered. If you happen to have the injectable form, make sure to hold the needle straight and inject it into a muscle, like the shoulder or the upper thigh. First, peel back the packaging to remove the device. The device has a plunger and a nozzle. Hold the device with your thumb on the plunger and two fingers on the nozzle. Be careful not to accidentally spray the naloxone before you are ready. The device only has one dose, so don't test it out. 
put the device right up their nostril until your fingers are touching their nose. Press firmly on the plunger to release the dose of naloxone. Come on, buddy. Wake up. Come on, man, wake up. After you administer naloxone, place them in the recovery position and wait for help. The person who overdosed needs immediate medical care. You should stay with them until help arrives in case they lose consciousness again. Another dose may be necessary. There you go. There you go. All right, that's it. Welcome back. Great job. When people think of overdose, they usually think of recreational opioid use like we saw here. This is a stereotype, and unfortunately, there are many situations that lead to accidental overdose. Let's take a look at other situations that can lead to accidental overdose. Mom? Mom? With this medication, this may be an overdose. Let's administer naloxone. All right, Blanche, stick with me, okay? In one second. All right, I'm just gonna go right up here. The patient took too much of her prescribed medication. She forgot that she took her medication before breakfast and took another dose after breakfast in the event that this had been a heart attack. Naloxone wouldn't have been able to treat the heart attack, but it would generally be fine to administer to her without serious complications. Talk to your healthcare provider or check the package insert for possible side effects and additional information. Jean, got your stuff. Oh no. <sighs> Eugene took an old opioid medication that he had previously been prescribed for pain. Usually this wouldn't cause an overdose, but he's taking a new benzodiazepine medication. When opioids and benzodiazepines mix, the results can be deadly. Always check with your doctor or pharmacist before taking any medication, just in case there will be a negative interaction with your other medications. Right Opioid overdose can happen to anyone. You can overdose from opioids even when taking a prescription exactly as your doctor prescribed, which is exactly what happened to me. All right, hotshot. I hope you're paying attention. It's your time to shine. Select the things you should look for when you suspect an opioid overdose.
review how to administer naloxone. Correct. You have to remove the device from its packaging. It will not do you a lot of good otherwise. The device does not have a cap to remove. It's ready to use once it's removed from the package. That's correct. You did it. You saved my life. Thank you for knowing what to do in the event of an opioid overdose. Accidental overdose can happen to anyone taking opioids, whether recreationally or even as directed by a doctor. This information can save a life. Opioid misuse is a national epidemic and accidental overdose can happen to anyone taking opioids. It takes an entire community to keep all our members safe from overdose. If you or someone you care about is taking opioids for any reason, consider getting naloxone at your local pharmacy and keeping it on you at all times. No prescription is required and it could save your life or the life of someone you care about. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Nova Lutz. We really appreciate you guys walking through that with us. Um, I really wanted to just thank all of the speakers who are part of this. Um, we really appreciate your time. It was amazing to hear from you all. And to everybody who attended, we appreciate your time as well. So with that, I think we're going to wrap up the evening. Thank you, Walmart. Thank you, Nova Lutz. And um, we really enjoyed you guys coming. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening.